Hi, welcome to Primary Insights for Come Follow Me. I'm Aliyah Goff with Rising Moon Adventures. This week's lesson is called They Were Steadfast and Immovable. Last week we talked a little bit about um, Alma the Younger and the Sons of Mosiah and how through the atonement of Jesus Christ they were able to change. And even though that they had been doing some things that were not nice and had been very hurtful to the Church of Jesus Christ, he was willing to forgive them and let them try again. And because of that they became amazing missionaries for our Savior and for His Church. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about Alma as he was being a missionary and some of the challenges that he came up against and some of the people that did not believe the same way that he did and and that were causing problems for the church and how that was handled. So I'm going to scoot back and I'm going to tell you the story of Alma the Younger and Nehor. Okay, let's move you in. Okay. Alma was the chief judge. Remember how we talked about that they didn't have kings anymore after Mosiah and Alma the Alma the younger became the first chief judge for his people the Nephites in the land of Zarahemla. He was a righteous man who loved God and obeyed his commandments. In his first year reigning as chief judge, a wicked man named Nehor was brought before him to be judged. Nehor had been going around the land of Zarahemla and talking bad about the church. He was telling the people that they deserved to be more popular and to have more power. He was telling them that they deserved to sit back and do nothing while other people worked to support them. He told them that it didn't matter whether they did good things or bad things, that God would let all people back into heaven to live with him, even if they made bad choices. He used these lies to make the people feel good about themselves. He made them feel like they were better than the people around them. People began to give him money. To hear his nice words. Many people followed him, but others were not happy about what he was saying. They knew that he was telling lies to get what he wanted from the people. One man with a lot of courage named Gideon. I love Gideon. Gideon shows up a few times in the scriptures, and he always shows so much courage and so much faithfulness. Gideon was old at this point. And he stood up to Nehor and told him he was a liar. Nehor was angry with Gideon and he pulled out a sword and he killed him. The people tied Nehor up and took him to Alma to be judged for his actions. Alma told him that he was guilty of priestcraft. Priestcraft is preaching lies about the church to get money. He also told Nehor he was guilty of murder and must be punished for his crimes. Before Nehor was killed for his crimes, he admitted that he had lied to the people. Heavenly Father wants us to be honest people. He does not want us to be selfish. He does not want us to try to use His name or His church to make ourselves rich or powerful. He wants us to love each other and serve each other. We, will, we find joy and make Heavenly Father very happy by being kind to others and thinking of their needs before our own. So what did Nehor do that was disappointing to Heavenly Father? One of the things that he was doing was telling lies to his children and making them follow him, follow Nehor, instead of Heavenly Father. That they were following Nehor's teachings and believing the things that he said because they were easier 
and they felt like they would have more power or mo more money because of what he was teaching them and that they didn't have to be accountable for their actions. And so those were lies that he told and Heavenly Father was not happy about that. And then also that he killed one of his faithful servants. And I know that made Heavenly Father really sad. In our church, when we are called to different things like teacher or bishop or stake president, those things are callings and jobs that we don't get paid for. We just serve because we love. Sometimes, um, what are some of the other callings that you can think of where people serve because they love? Relief Society presidencies and young women's presidencies, young men's presidencies. There's lots of different callings in the church. Maybe you go to activity days if you're older than eight and those kids are led by a leader who helps them and they don't get paid for that. In our church, we serve because we love our Heavenly Father and we love the people that we're serving. And we don't get served because we don't serve because we are getting money from it or anything else. And we're happy to serve because it's what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. Um, and did you notice that even though um, Nehor and his followers were mean to the people in the church, were they mean back? They weren't, were they? They were kind and they, and they showed the love that Heavenly Father shows to us. In Alma 1.30 it says, And thus in their prosperous circumstances, so that means that even though they had money and, um, and they had plenty of, for their needs and even more, they, in those circumstances they did not send away any who were naked or who were hungry, who were athirst or who were sick or that had not been nourished, and they did not set their heart upon riches. Therefore they were liberal to all. They shared with everyone, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether in the church or out of it, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. So as members of Christ's church then, and as members of Christ's church now, we share with each other. We notice that there's needs in the members around us, in our friends and our family and, and those people that we know. And when we see those needs, we help. We pay our tithing and our fast offerings and we help those who do not have as much money as we do. And those offerings go to help with that. What are some other things that you can share? Some of the things that I thought of that we can share. Um, I know when you're, when you're little, the things that are most important to you are your toys. And those are things that we can share with other people. When my kids were little, when it would time, come time for Christmas, they were happy to go through their toys and pick out some of the toys that they didn't use anymore, didn't love anymore, and we would take them and donate them at the DI because we knew that there were other little kids that, that needed toys. And so that's something that we did every year right before Christmas is that we would go through our go through our toys and we would pick out something that we could share with other people. Then other things that we can share is our time. Sometimes our friends just need us to sit and listen to them and to share our time with them, to spend time with them. We can also share our talents. Each of us has different things that we're good at and we can share those things. One of the things that I love to share is my my ability to teach. I love sharing these lessons about the Book of Mormon and the things that I've learned from the Book of Mormon with you. I love sharing my knowledge and sharing my the things that I that I have learned with you guys. We can also share um, our ability to listen. Sometimes people need us just to listen to them. Sometimes they're having a hard time and, and the most important thing that we can share with them is a listening ear. And I'm sure that you guys can think of other things that you would be able to share. So I want you to talk to your families. I'm going to post a song um, called K Kindness Begins With Me. And then after you sing that song, I want you to talk to your families about what are some of the things that you can share and how are you gonna do that this week? And I will see you back here for part two.